Well, hello everyone, Dan Her with Dan Her Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am still recovering from my heart surgery. It's winter outside, I can't get out and do much prospecting. But I thought I would take you through some of the things that I can do while I'm recovering, while I'm stuck inside, while COVID is keeping us indoors. One of the most exciting things that I found this last year was my ocean picture stone claim. And I have sold a lot of that stone and a lot of people have asked me, how well does it tumble? So I thought today I would take you through rock tumbling, how to rock tumble, how to polish rocks, specifically with my ocean picture stone. Should be fun. I hope you all enjoy. Now, obviously we're indoors. I don't need this hat. Now, if you haven't seen my videos with the Ocean Picture Stone, this is some of the most amazing blue gemstone around. Absolutely love it. It's very, very popular with uh, lapidary artists and jewelers who make all sorts of jewelry and sculptures and everything out of this stuff. Today, I have separated out a whole bunch of uh, real nice looking little pieces that I'm going to put into the rock tumbler and see if we can get some beautiful little polished stones of ocean picture stone. First, I want you to see what I have here. And the best way to see what is inside each of these rocks is if I actually take a little bit of mineral oil and put it on the surface so that it uh, polishes it up a little bit and you can see what kind of stones I have here. So I'm going to take a second to do that and then I'll show you my rocks. One real nice thing about owning the quarry where we harvest this ocean picture stone from is I have as much of it and any kind of it as I want. So I'm very lucky. I got to go through the bin that I keep all the smaller chips in and choose the pieces I like the best. I really like pieces that have host and blue and white. So I went and picked out a whole bunch of those kind of pieces. It's the bin that we make our small chip bags out of. We sell these on my website www.danherprospecting.com for $30. Half pound of ocean picture stone chips that are perfect for tumbling or making pendants out of or that kind of stuff. And I'm very lucky I got to go and choose the best for what I was doing. There we go. Got some with dendrites in it. Got the little cylinders that are the core samples that I took uh, when I was checking out the seam. Got some great host rock with layers of blue on top of it. A nice variety, one with a seam going through it here. Nice variety of stones. Now often when you're dealing with lapidary rough, you can't really tell what's inside the stone. This is a piece of ocean picture stone. From the outside, it does not look like much at all. But when I gave it a fresh break, wow, amazing. Host, blue water, waves out in the distance, sky off, uh, sky in the distance distance, and what a beautiful piece. But again, if you're just looking from the outside, it doesn't necessarily look like much. And that's often why we have to wet them down, coat them in mineral oil, whatever, to really see sort of what might be inside those rough stones. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's get to tumbling. First thing we have to do is take the uh, rocks and put them in our tumbler. Now I am using a Loratone 12 pound tumbler. The big guy from Loratone here. There might be a bigger one, but it's a, it's a big guy. It can take a lot of rock. Filling it up. They say to fill up these tubs two thirds to three quarters full. That's not even half. I need to add some more rocks to this thing. So, I do have some chips left over from the Dana Blue seam. So let's put those in as well. That's... I'm going to try putting one, one only, of my special big garnets. I have these up for sale on my website. 
one big garnet. And I still have a lot of room in there. So I have a whole bunch of agates from my agate bags. I'm going to fill this thing up with agates just so it's nice and full while we tumble. A bunch of agates that I usually have in my agate bags, they can go into. Once they're polished, they'll probably just go back in the agate bags for sale. So some of the black and white agates from a different claim of mine, those might polish up nicely. I don't know. Let's toss them in and see what happens. We're getting there. Now this is a special rock I found at my Ocean Picture Stone claim. It's a very green with agate and blue going through it. Hard to see on the camera here. But uh, I'm going to put a piece of that in, just a slab. Got a slab cut here, nice and thin and see what that comes out like. And to take up the rest of the space, some of the serpentine I sell on my website as well. It's a very soft rock, but let's see how it polishes up. And there we go. We are two thirds full. Now to put some water in it. For rock tumbling, you want the uh, rocks to just be covered by water. So you'll fill up your rock tumbler until the water just covers the rocks. There we go. Right up to the surface. That's good. Now rock tumbling is done in three to four steps using different grits. To start with for this, we're going to be using the coarsest grit which is a 60 to 90 grit silicon carbide. And for this size tumbler and this amount of rock here, we want almost a full cup of grit in there. Maybe a little bit less because I'm only two thirds full, not three quarters. There we go. Basically three quarters of a cup, a little bit more than three quarters of a cup of coarse grit in there to do the initial rounding and grinding of those stones. The coarse stuff just takes off the sharp corners and starts making the stones nice and round. We can now put the lid on. It's very important on these lids that they're clean around the edges. And that this groove around here is nice and clean. In fact, after the coarse grit, cleanliness is very important through all of this grinding because you don't want to get accidentally have any extra coarse grit when you start using the finer grits. But to start with, we just want to make sure that that lid seals so we make sure that the groove is clean and the lid is clean. We can then Get it in there, make sure it's sitting down all the way around nicely. Put the cap, the lid cap on. Ooh. Of course we have the paper washer, which I'm sure does nothing. The aluminum washer, which helps hold her down nicely. And the top cap, uh, the nut, the nut holds everything on, tightens it up, seals it nicely, and it also has a groove in it that rides in the tumbler to keep things aligned perfectly. We will now put the drum in place, making sure that that nut slides right into the little holder, that, which keeps the tub from moving back and forth. It holds it in place nice, nicely, all ready to go. And why? Why they don't put a switch on these things, I don't know. To turn them on and off, you have to plug them in. Or use a power bar. Oh no. I have to unplug something. There we go. She's tumbling. 
Now I should say that each of the four grits I'm going to use in here needs to be tumbled for a long time. I'm actually going to, I'm planning on this to take more than a month. So I'm going to plan on each grit to take a week's time. We're going to see how that goes after each grit to decide if we need more. In fact, I'll even open them up about halfway through each week just to see how things are going. But for the coarse grit, we're going to go for quite a bit of time, probably a full week. You need at least three days. Some people do it overnight, not enough, not enough. Really depends on the look you're going for, but for me, I'm going for a week on this coarse grit. Here we go. So it has been tumbling for two days now. I just want to open it up and have a good look at it, make sure things are going well inside. There's two problems I could see inside here. One, the uh, serpentine is an extremely soft rock compared to the hard agates and quartz that's in there. I want to make sure that it's not just chewed away to nothing. That is one thing you have to watch out for. And second, the thin slabs with those big, big rocks that were in there, I just want to make sure I haven't smashed them. Though if I have, it's too late for anything, it's not a big deal. Let's check it out. So I just rinsed a couple off to have a good look. The thin slab is holding together nicely, hasn't cracked under the force of the big rocks hitting it. Ocean picture stone is smoothing off great. And the serpentine is holding its own. It doesn't seem to be wearing away to nothing, although it is smoother than the rest of the stones. Uh, so looks like things are tumbling well. Doesn't look like I have to do anything to it. Close it back up. Turn it back on and we're good. Now that it's tumbled for a week, it's time to empty the drum, clean everything extremely well, and put it back on with the mid grit. Let's do it. So the first thing to do once it's open is to pour out the sludge through something to sift it out. In this case, I'm gonna use an Arbor Fabricating Classifier, the 1 8 version. Now, for this job, cleanliness is extremely important. So I'm going to wash out the tub so that when I start tumbling it with the mid-size grit, there's no chance of coarse grit being left in it. And I will wash it very good. There we go. The tub is perfectly clean. The lid needs to be perfectly clean. And the rocks have to be perfectly clean. So I really took my time. I made sure everything came out perfectly clean. There is no chance of any grit left on any of these stones. The serpentine is rounded over quite nicely. It hasn't gone away. I was a little bit worried the serpentine might be so soft that it would just wear away, but it's nice. The thinnest of the slabs didn't shatter. It's still in good shape. That'll come out nice. There's a piece of Dana Blue. Wow. Some of the cylinders. Some purple agate. Very nice looking rocks. So we have filled this back up about three quarters of the way with water. We have the medium sep grit here. Um, this is 120, 220 grit. And we're gonna use about the same amount, about three quarters of a cup in there. So we'll seal the top back on, make sure it's all nice, tight and sealed and put it back on the tumbler. So the tumbler's been going now for a week with the second grit. It's time to clean it out, 
and put the third grit in and let it go for a week too. For step three here, we will be using the fine grit, 320 to 400, silicon carbide grit. And again, cleanliness is so very important. Tub is perfectly clean, the rocks are perfectly clean. where I have been using just under one cup, maybe three quarters of a cup, for this finer grit, we can get away with a half cup. And there we go, that can tumble for a week. This is interesting. When I started, this bin was three quarters full of rock. Now we're about a quarter full. And I have noticed that the serpentine has almost all completely worn away. You know, three or four weeks of hard agates beating on the soft, soft serpentine was just too much for it. In fact, everything in here is way smaller than when it started. Fill it up with water and put in the next grit. So for the final grit, we'll be using one micron cerium oxide. This doesn't go by grit levels like the other ones where it said like 100, 200, 500 grit. This is one micron stuff. I'm not sure what that actually translates to, to grit. If someone wants to calculate it for me, please leave it in the comments below. And we won't be using quite as much because there's not quite as much rock anymore. So there was a quarter cup in, you know, I may have two or three pounds of rock left in there. Tighten everything back up and put it on for one more week. And then she'll be done. So, we have been going a month now at this tumbling. The coarse, medium, fine, and then the polished grits each for a week. It has been a month. Can you tell a difference in my beard? It's time to open up the tumbler after the polish and see what we got. There is possibly one more step. There is a burnishing step if we need it. That's done with ivory soap, but we'll only do that if we need it. If not, I'll just explain it to you. Let's check it out. Well, here we go. I'm going to take these out of here, dry them off, wipe them down, and see how nice they look all polished up. Now the agates I put in, they came out beautifully. Nice, perfect polish. Every last one of them is just shiny and beautiful. I think I will include these in my agate bags that I sell, my agate grab bags. I'll take one and put in each bag. Some of these you have to look up against the light to really see what's inside them. Black and white agates from my agate claim are amazing. Love these little things. Now this is something I worried about right from the beginning, and my worries came to fruition. The serpentine I put in was just too soft. Of all the serpentine I put in, this is all I got back out of it. All the rest of them just ground away to nothing and disappeared. So, something to watch out for when tumbling. Rocks of different hardnesses probably shouldn't be tumbled together. The soft, soft serpentine just went away. And now for what everyone wants to really see. The ocean picture stone. All tumbled up and polished. came out beautifully. There are some nice, nice pieces in there. Let's get some close-ups.
I should also point out the video of this camera doesn't pick out the color nearly as well as the pictures of this camera do. So this is the video and here's a picture. And I wasn't playing with the settings at all. No saturation, no nothing like that. That's just a picture with a flash. The more light you get on this stuff, the more the color shows up. Look at that piece of Dana Blue. Woohoo! Very, very happy with the agates. Very, very happy with the ocean picture stone. The serpentine, hmm. Bye bye, serpentine. Too soft. So, I hope you all really enjoyed my video on tumbling the ocean picture stone, or how to rock tumble in general. Uh, had some great success, got some beautiful stones. Hopefully, if you needed it, you'll learn something along the way. I had fun doing it. Hopefully you had fun watching it. And again, a couple things to watch out for. Watch out for hardnesses. Soft stones and really hard stones don't tumble well together. They don't play well together. So try to stick to an equivalent or a similar type of hardness on your rocks. Also, Cleanliness. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Make sure you clean everything between each stage so crazy well. If you don't, you will contaminate between stages and that will interfere with your polish. I did mention there was one other step that you could do if your polish wasn't coming out nice and shiny or if you wanted just that extra little kick. Tumble it for a couple hours with shredded ivory soap. Just take ivory soap, a knife to ivory soap, shred off a bunch, put it in the tumbler, add water, tumble your rocks with some ivory soap, hard soap, and it will give it just that extra little kick. And as always, I hope everyone's having an amazing day out there. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you're going to enjoy my other videos. I have lots more on rock hunting, rock working, gold panning, treasure hunting, mining, everything. If you haven't looked at the rest of my channel yet, go have a look. There's probably something else out there that you're gonna like. Big, big thanks to my patrons because your support. I get to make these videos for everyone to watch. If you want to learn more about supporting my channel, head off to patreon.com slash danherd. Until the next video, everyone. Bye!